In this video, we're going to take a look at setting up a MIDI keyboard within Studio One 3. Now, before we get started working within the program, it's important that uh, if your MIDI keyboard came with a driver that you need to install first, make sure that you do that and then connect the keyboard using the USB cable. And then at that point, we're ready to go ahead and launch Studio One and get it set up within the program. So we can get started by coming to Studio One choosing options. You can use the hotkeys control plus comma uh, in order to bring it up quickly. And as you can see here in the external devices tab, I have a QWERTY keyboard set up so that I could use my laptop keyboard to trigger VST instruments. But I'd like to, I've got a new keyboard and so I want to use that. So what do we do? We can just come to the add button. And then here to the left we see a list of manufacturers and here is where you can look to find your specific keyboard. Hopefully there's it's already here because uh, most likely in that situation then if there are additional knobs or faders on your MIDI keyboard then those will already be um, mapped. They, there won't be mapped to parameters per se but uh, unless the driver that you that came with it has mapped them but at least the sliders and knobs will be recognized already and you won't have to go through the process of setting that up. Now I have an Akai MPK Mini so under Akai we do have that listed um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just add this as a generic keyboard in case there's anyone else out there who uh, does not have theirs show up here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put manufacturer it would be good for you to go ahead and label, put in what the manufacturer is here. Uh, I'm just calling this generic because I'm not going to leave this in here like that. Uh, then below that, this is where you can control how many of the MIDI channels are active of the 16. By default, all 16 are active. You can turn them off by clicking the all. And this way you can choose individual channels if for some reason you wanted to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and just click that all and turn those back on. From the receive from, you want to click the drop down menu and choose your particular keyboard. I'm working with the MPK, so I'm using that, even though for this example I'm adding it as a generic keyboard. Uh, the send to, uh, the, the manual says that you don't need to worry about the send to if you're adding a generic keyboard, so I'm actually just going to leave that blank. But if yours is listed and you've added it, go ahead and find it in the send to and choose it there. At the very bottom here I'm going to choose to have this new keyboard I'm adding as the default instrument input so whenever I create a virtual instrument track or a VST track rather by default it's going to put this new keyboard in as the input source so I'll be ready to start playing as soon as um, that track is loaded. Now split channels is going to sp split up these 16 MIDI channels so that you can choose an individual channel within a track when you've added a VST instrument. So I'm going to select that just so you can see what that looks like. We hit OK. We should be all set. I'm going to hit OK. Um, and just before we leave here, the reconnect is if for some reason your MIDI keyboard gets disconnected, Go ahead and physically reconnect it to your computer. Oftentimes with programs you'll need to restart in order to have it re-recognized, re but within Studio One we can just hit reconnect and it should find that keyboard again. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to press T to add a track. I want an instrument tra track. I'm adding one. OK. And I'm going to just uh, Shift E to expand that out a bit. Then as you can see we have our new keyboard here. It is showing up as the default input just as we wanted. And this section here is when we chose that split channel option, this is where we can choose an individual channel here. So, but I'm going to change that and take that off. So I'm going to control comma and if you ever want to edit your settings again for the keyboard that you've added, just select it, choose edit, then you can come in and make changes. And in this instance, I want to take that split channels off. 
OK, OK. And then now I'm going to choose the new keyboard that we added. And as you can see, we no longer have that option to choose the individual channels. Now I'm going to come over to the instruments and add a presence so we can check out our keyboard to see if the keys are going to trigger the instrument. Okay, so we're in business there. But what about any additional faders and knobs? Well, these do need to be kind of recognized by uh, Studio One and they use uh, a protocol called Control Link. So I'm going to close this instrument down for the moment and choose, if we F3 and bring up our mixer, I'm going to choose External external devices and I'm gonna double click our new keyboard and this is gonna bring up our map control map for that keyboard now again if your manufacturing keyboard showed up in the add external devices this is something you really don't need to worry about it is good to know how to access this and if you did bring follow along and bring yours up you should see your faders and knobs show up in this area above but since I added the MPK as a generic keyboard, those are not there. But I would like to have access to the eight knobs that are on this keyboard. So what do we do? We want to click this MIDI Learn. And then all I need to do is start turning each one on my keyboard. Until I now have all eight learned. And then deselect MIDI Learn. And we're done. If I had chosen the MPK Mini from the Akai folder in the manufacturer list, these would have already been here, and I wouldn't need to do this. That's the whole point of choosing by the manufacturer. So now the next step is, well, I'd like to use these controls to control different parameters and VST instruments uh, and so on. First, let's just start with the fader since we're already here. I would like, so K1 is how knob one is labeled uh, on the MPK. So on your device, you would just move the slider or knob, whichever you'd like to map to a fader. Uh, you just turn it. For the fader, I'm going to right click just above that knob and assign control one to that fader. So now we have control there and you can just go along and do this for uh, this keyboard like I said has eight so I could map up to uh, eight faders and one thing to keep in mind though is if you take note here of where the knob is I'm gonna turn this all the way up so this represents where I'm at physically on my MIDI keyboard if I come in and move this down this virtual knob will move down but on my keyboard the knob is still turned up so when I move it the fader is gonna jump unfortunately so there is not soft takeover on here so you can see how that jumps like that now what about VST instruments um, let's F3 close our mixer and let's bring up our presence XT now this is one thing that you can notice here our control is now free the focus has changed to our VST instrument so we can map these to however many instruments we want and whichever is in focus those controls will be there so uh, let's see I want LFO 1 the rate I'd like to map that so if I turn that and I'm gonna actually come over here now with this drop down menu we can choose the external devices we have set up next to that we have a gear if we click that we can open up these controls and this is useful for mapping and automation as well but so whichever parameter you want to assign to a knob or fader just turn it it's gonna show up here you can see 
as I move this, the, the hertz is changing. Now control one, I'm turning that, and you can see here that that's recognizing that. Then all you have to do is click this arrow that merges these two, it joins them together. So now if I turn my, the knob on my NPK, I now have control of that. So we'll do that one more time. With the cutoff here, I'll activate the filter. Turn that cutoff, you can see this window changes to cutoff. I'm gonna assign that to knob two. Now you can see that this has changed from control one to control two. And we just simply then click the arrow I'm turning the knob on my keyboard and I've got control of that. There's actually a couple of different ways that you can do this as well. I'm gonna turn knob three on my keyboard. And you can see I'm on control three. And I'm just gonna right click the rate and then choose to assign frequency to control three on new keyboard. So now I've got control. And if I bring up this control map, this will tell you where everything is mapped. So as I turn, you can see. Now, if I close out of the VST F3 and bring up the mixer, you can see those mappings have disappeared and we're back to our volume control for one. Now a couple final points that I'd like to make, uh, just a few basic things. I'll have three and close out of that. Just to cover this area here, when you're choosing your inputs, this is everything that you have set up. And you can choose all inputs, and that way you can, you know, uh, still pick up your new keyboard. Any input that's coming in is going to trigger uh, the device. So, um, also, if you, I'm going to control comma to bring up our external devices area. At the bottom down here, there's a checkbox, notify, notify me if devices are unavailable when Studio One starts. Now, if you're going to be working on a laptop and you're traveling around with it a lot, whenever you start Studio One, it's going to say, hey, if you don't have that keyboard connected, it's going to say, hey, it's not connected, it's going to stop while it's the program is opening uh, every time that it's not connected. This can get a little annoying, so just I wanted to make a side note that if you don't want to see that message, if you want it to go ahead and uh, the program to load without giving an error message whenever your keyboard is not connected, just deselect that there and that will take care of that issue. And the very last thing, we did access our control map for our keyboard from within the mixer. But just so you're aware, you can also access, you need to be sure that you've got these windows open here by clicking the gear. You can click this drop down arrow and choose your keyboard that you've added. And then you'll get your control map there as well. And this can just give you an idea. You can pin that to keep it on top. And then this way you can just see where everything is mapped if you want to have a visual aid. If you have a second monitor, then you can even drag this over to the other monitor. And uh, that way you can just keep you aware of where everything is mapped if you, if you don't have it memorized. One other tidbit, I don't want to leave off without this. If you're ever troubleshooting MIDI problems, take note down at the bottom here, there's a little icon. So as I press keys uh, on my keyboard, we have a little light that will uh, indicate that the information is being received. So this is one of the first places that you want to look just to be sure that the MIDI information is even making it into Studio One. Uh, that can save you uh, kind of a headache. If you're pressing keys and then this is not lighting up, then you know that it's most likely maybe a loose cable or something at the keyboard itself and not within Studio One because if it was within Studio One, then this would be lighting up and somehow it's not triggering the instrument. But if we're pressing keys and this isn't lighting up, then we know the MIDI information isn't even making it into the program to begin with. Um, 
So, and another place to look there would be at your settings um, and coming into here and being sure that nothing got changed somehow.